Here we go. What is going on, Cover One crew? Welcome back to the show. Hope everybody's great, man. Hope you had a Merry Christmas. Hopefully the drinks were flowing, food was plentiful, and everybody got what they wanted for Christmas, including making to the Fantasy Football Finals. What are we talking? Week 17, waiver wire championship help must add players. We got to get these players in our rosters. There is not a lot, but I mean, if we're requiring like some flex options, potential, you know, upside touchdown play, I got you covered here. We're talking big time TD upside for some of these players that could potentially uplift our point totals going into the fantasy football finals i made it in two out of three semifinals i am rolling with y'all as well let's talk these running backs cleo herbert found his way back to the good graces with the chicago bears played very well uh, with the bears uh, versus the arizona cardinals he is now back on the radar for a potentially volume upside uh, triple headed backfields is never something that i necessarily subscribe to or like especially for a fantasy football finals but he is facing off against these atlanta falcons did get a lot of volume justin herbert continues his audition uh, or justin fields excuse me uh, uh, continues his audition for next season potentially he will be the starting quarterback again in chicago so herbert is a good one as they're going to be playing for pride versus falcons hopefully knock them out of the fa uh, nfl playoffs so there is something on the line there 46 percent ownership khalil herbert is likely your top running back waiver ad this week justice hill for these baltimore ravens ravens smacked the 40 49ers in the teeth uh, based on the fact of defensive turnovers and uh, Brock Purdy did not look good but Justice Hill taking on these Miami Dolphins this week should be decent man I'm telling y'all PPR upside is definitely here he has flex appeal all day long he was uh, being utilized quite a bit versus those 49ers I fully expect the Ravens to utilize Justice Hill in a very similar likeness this week versus these fish so it's gonna be very interesting only 16% ownership he should be on the waiver wire for most of y'all I picked up Hill last week in one of my leagues in the, for the finals as well. So we will see if I will play him. I'll get you covered and start sit. But Justice Hill, definitely a priority uh, waiver wire ad. I had to drop Zeus, Zamir Zeus White down the board just a little bit because Josh Jacobs should be returning this week. He was dealing with an illness, and hence why he sat last week. So that's why he is not my top waiver uh, running back at this point for championship support. However, do get the waiver wire priorities in for him. Put him on the bench just in case Jacobs does not go with that uh, calf uh, slash knee injury so we will see Zeus does play again versus Indianapolis Colts points will be very plentiful and that's exactly what we need so definitely get him at least on your rosters if he still resides on your waiver wire 20% owned in majority of leagues Jaleel McLaughlin he finds his way back to my board PPR upside does exist here especially versus these Los Angeles Chargers Denver Broncos you know they utilized them a little bit more once again this past week could we see something of the similar notion yes Yes, we could, but it is very much high risk, high reward. You're very much looking for, you know, uh, picking at straws if you're going to go Jaleel McLaughlin way. This is purely matchup upside PPR appeal for a McLaughlin. So if you do have better options, obviously take those over this man. Tyde Spears taking on the Houston Texans. He's been all right, man. And I mean, even though Derrick Henry, like I told y'all last week, he was going to be a very good start for y'all. Got you a good, uh, what, 22 points-ish in half PBR leagues. Very good start for Derrick Henry. Will they play Tajay a little bit more this week, knowing the season is basically done? See what they have in the man. Likely going to be moving on from Derrick Henry in the offseason. These Titans will. Maybe Tajay does have a very big contest versus Houston Texans. Going to be hard to trust as well, but flex appeal does uh, definitely work in this case. Chase Brown taking on these Kansas City Chiefs, and Browning looked ter uh, terrible this past week. Okay, will they get back on track versus these Kansas City Chiefs who do not look good in their own right? Chase Brown definitely needs the rock. Is it going to be enough volume to trust almost, what, set, uh, six and a half points this past week? He gets into the end zone. He'll likely get you the 10-point spot, but it is very hard to trust for Chase Brown, even against a great uh, Kansas City Chiefs, Chiefs defense. Excuse me. I don't know if I can trust it to suggest a start, but if you are desperate at the running back spot, Chase Brown is not a bad option. Last flyer on the board, not saying you can pick him up and play him, but Miles Sanders versus Jacksonville Jaguars this week with the Carolina Panthers. Miles has done nothing for us since, like, what, week four? So it's very tough to trust, but it's one of these situations. The end of the season is coming. The Panthers did play very well versus the Packers, so we will see. Maybe they do institute more Miles in this run game this week because it's going to be one of those players 
players, everyone's going to say, man, everybody should have played him, but nobody said anything. Miles Sanders could be one of these guys. But again, very much high risk, high reward. He will lose you your championship if you play him and he does not get touches, but he could subsequently get you some touchdown upside if you are in deeper leagues. So Miles Sanders right now, 46% owned. It's going to be a very tough start, but at least he's got potential name cachet and potential volume upside, which has not happened in a long time. So he's just on my list as a potential, uh, you know, big time player this week. Very hard to trust. Quarterback time. We got Nick Mullins. He threw picks and interceptions like a madman this past week. He's going to be taking on these Green Bay Packers this week. Uh, very important contest uh, for a uh, uh, pride uh, basically that's what they're doing now anyway their playoff hopes are basically dwindling uh, as as they start to continue to lose contests but Nick Mullins has done enough for us as a streaming quarterback uh, community to get us good point productivity should continue with JJ JJ is just a freak put uh, put the ball in his hands and he's gonna make plays Jordan Addison did go down with an injury so we will have to keep monitor tabs on Addy uh, but they do got KJ Osborne and Powell to fill in if that is the case so Nick Mullins is a very good streaming option this week versus those Green Bay Packers uh, Derek Carr, next one on the board. He's got a great matchup versus these Tampa Bay Bucks because the Bucks do not uh, play very good uh, sound uh, past secondary. Even though Derek Carr is not the quarterback, I want to trust in the fantasy football finals. If you have been streaming all season long, he is a viable piece that could give you good point productivity this week. 206 points taken on a Bucks defense that is not great in the secondary, but they will come after him with the pass rush. So you got to watch out for that as well. 30% owned if you want to go down the Derek Carr train, man. Joe Flacco. Oh, flaccid uh, he's been doing well again 85 points since taking over but he is taking on those New York Jets the defense of the New York Jets will continue to play hard will Flacco continue to throw interceptions highly likely will it be one that we are going to regret later on I mean he got what 25 27 points this past week is going to give you a very solid floor he had Amari Cooper looking like you know unbelievably vintage Amari Cooper over almost 300 yards receiving just killed everybody who had him but uh, Joe Flacco's definitely at least moving the ball enough to give us that safe floor nothing less than 15 points should come his way so Flacco can be trusted even versus these New York Jets on Thursday night football Gardner Minshew last uh, streaming quarterback on my board versus these Las Vegas Raiders Michael Pittman was out. We had to expect that the passing upside was going to taper off. Michael Pittman should be back this week. He saw a setback in his concussion protocol, you know, uh, to pass concussion protocol. So this week he should be back in the goods, which will uplift a Gardner Minshew as Pittman has been the safety blanket for Mustache Minshew and the Raiders. Even though the defense is playing well, Minshew should be at least able to support a, a decent pass attack versus them. Wide receiver time. Who's on this board? Not a whole heck of a lot anymore, but Romeo Dobbs, Romeo. Oh my guy, I've been telling y'all, man, okay, with all the injuries that they do have, Romeo Dobbs is still a very good talent, 140 points, and he's under 50% owned, this is crazy talk, man, he is good enough, it's just the consistency rates are where what's killing us, and what does leave a lot of people to say, I'm looking in other directions, which is absolutely fair and reasonable, taking on these Vikings this week, if the injuries do continue to Jaden Reed and a Christian Watson, Dobbs is absolutely the top waiver wire pick this week for me, at the wide receiver spot, because he does still possess a lot of touchdown upside, his floor is uh, you know, relatively safe where the ceiling is is a little lower, and I think that's another reason why a lot of people fade a Romeo Dobbs because the ceiling has not topped that twenty point range that we're looking for. But he does do have, or he does have, excuse me, a lot of upside this week if injuries are still continuing for these Packers. Demarcus Robinson, he's got to be on our rosters, man. Six point two percent. Yes, it's so difficult to trust being the third wide receiver in the Rams team with Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua. But DeMarcus is absolutely killing it with his high, high upside touchdown appeal. And he's got to be uh, at least added to your roster if you're looking for that touchdown upside. He's absolutely killing it. The afterthought in being covered by uh, most NFL defenses at this point. Matthew Stafford is playing like he's 25, y'all. And he's able to support more than just one option, two options. DeMarcus Robinson is an absolute, absolute uh, flex fantasy uh, viability this week as well. He's going to be able to play and against a New York Giants team that's going to be trying their best to stifle these Rams. I think that uh, Robinson could absolutely find his way back into that end zone once again. KJ Osborne, almost 20% ownership rate right now, and this is due in part to the fact of a Jordan Addison potentially not playing this week. He he's dealing with an ankle injury, was ruled out of that contest very quickly, likely crippled a lot of y'all as well getting into the finals, but KJ Osborne would give you very good PPR upside, anywhere from six, six receptions to about 65 yards. Potential touchdown does 
exists for KJ Osborne with a Nick Mullins playing with Justin Jefferson. He is definitely a great flex option this week as well. Rashid Shaheed taking on those Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Okay, TD Upside is what we're looking for this week because we want to win those trophies, man. And Rashid G definitely would have it versus the Bucks, where he could take the top off of this defense where Chris Olave was eating big this past week. We could see the, you know, them try to make the, the Bucks remove the stacked boxes to assist and Alvin Kamara stretch the field a little bit more. And Shahid could have that one of those games where it's like three for 120 and two touchdowns. We could see it versus these Bucks. Shahid is definitely a very high a potential play this week. DJ Char hear me out on this one yes he pops off for the first time basically all season long Bryce Young looked good y'all last week and maybe he's starting to turn that corner just a little bit we will see if he can replicate uh, success back to back weeks but it is on the revenge game I got it right there for y'all our game for a uh, DJ Chark going back to play these Jacksonville Jaguars how fitting would it be that DJ Chark would end the basically end the Jacksonville Jaguars season at this point I mean 92 points on the season is nothing to sneeze at but 16% ownership rate right now. And as long as Bryce Young can actually continue to play the way he played this past week versus these Packers, there is definite upside to a DJ Chark potentially having that TD upside game again. Two tutties this past week. Revenge game is nothing to uh, you know keep out of your mind. It is something that these players do love. And you know DJ Chark has got this one circled on his board. Very much high risk, high reward. So I'll definitely leave that one up to y'all, man. Curtis Samuel versus 49ers. You know the 49ers are going to be uh, coming back for blood, man, versus these Washington. Commanders, you got to feel bad for these commies. It's not going to be great, man. But Curtis Samuel will have a very good floor of PBR upside likely again this week. We'll see how it does go with Sam Howell. It almost appears that Sam has kind of hit the, uh, the wall. Basically, his rookie season this year, we got to give him, you know, the due, you know, credit praise that he did have a great season. Maybe he did have the uh, hit the rookie wall at this point. Maybe it is better to start Jacoby Brissett and allow Sam Howell just to sit and learn and watch now. But I mean, you got to let these young guys work their stuff out on the field so if even if Sam Howell does play he might if he does struggle which he likely will versus the 49ers great defense who will be looking uh, you know to rebound after a big blowout loss to these Baltimore Ravens you got to believe Brissett might uh, enter this contest a lot earlier which would uplift a Samuel as well for PPR upside so definitely he is still on the radar at 43% uh, ownership right now and last one on my board is uh, Palmer Josh Palmer for these Las Vegas or Los Angeles Chargers excuse me taking on these Denver Broncos tough to trust versus the Broncos but I mean both out of the playoff contention at this point and I foresee you know if Keenan Allen does sit once again this is going to be defaulted target share going back to a uh, Palmer so that's all we require is that volume tar and target share upside so Palmer does possess that as well couple other notables is a Wicks a Downs a Burks and a Rashad Bateman I mean pick your poison there it's not a whole heck of a lot to trust Rashad Bateman's the one that I'm actually looking for the most because there is that high risk high reward TD upside versus these Miami Dolphins so definitely keep tabs on that one I will not be shocked if Rashad Bateman does score a TD this week finishing off with tight ends Tucker Craft continues to be the you know best tight end option very safe floor giving you that eight points to 10 points that we're looking for and if the injuries do continue like I say in Green Bay uh, similarly for Romeo Dobbs it's going to continue for Tucker Craft he is a great tight end very solid very reliable he blocks he does not leave the field it is a very very good option even in the red zone on play action pass Tucker Craft could absolutely give you what you need versus these Minnesota Vikings Juwan Johnson next one on my board like I said versus these Tampa Bay Buccaneers it's going to be some of these players everyone's going to fade and say why didn't we see it Juwan Johnson's got that written all over him this week potential TD upside does exist for this man only 15% owned right now again a lot of these players will be high risk high reward Juwan Johnson is definitely one of these cats as well he could find his way into the end zone I would not be surprised especially with the lack of usage for a Taysom Hill that we have seen uh, recently. Man, Gerald Everett taking on these Denver Broncos. Very safe floor as well for him, especially if Keenan Allen still does sit. I would be surprised if they brought Keenan back for this uh, you know, matchup. They might shut him down for the rest of the season. We will see. We'll watch the injury report, but Gerald Everett without a Keenan Allen does have a very safe floor with uh, a target share and PPR upside. Tanner Hudson taking on these Kansas City Chiefs. He took a back seat this past week. He should get back on track with Browning having safer options versus a very good, uh, still a very good Kansas City Chiefs defense. We saw Aiden O'Connell was not able to move the ball whatsoever through the air, I mean, versus these Chiefs, but... 
Tanner Hudson could be one of these guys. Again, high risk, high reward. TD upside does play. If I had to pick, I'd take Tucker Craft over Hudson, but Hudson does have a very good potential floor for us. He just needs a target share. And finishing off with Tyler Higby versus these New York Giants. TD upside does exist here. A lot for a Higby as well, even though uh, Demarcus Robinson has been kind of taking away the thunder for the TD upside for a Higby as well. And that's not a bad play. It's just your floor is going to be extremely low, so you definitely got to caution and warrant that one also, but there is not a a lot of players here left on the waiver wire but these are some of these guys that could absolutely be plugged in to certain situations in our roster and give us the point totals that we require but nevertheless as always don't forget to hit that like button hit that subscribe button jump in those comments give me your thoughts i ride with y'all to these fantasy football finals we're gonna ho hoist some trophies before the new year you gotta love it man stay tuned for all the videos coming your way this week as well have a great day and we'll see you next time i am out